Welcome back to some more Madden 25. I am Jerome PKR. Oh my god, I've never said that. I've never said it. But I need to start saying it so you guys know the name, damn it. But this is going to be the first rebuild of Madden 25. It's going to be the Seattle Seahawks, a team that I kind of hold pretty dear to our heart as it was one of our more successful, more fun Madden franchise series. We did a couple Maddens back, but... One of the cool things about this year's game is they have the kind of screen that they do, of course, have in College Football 25, but it has a lot of information, like the 2024 NFL ranking, which I believe, if I'm using intuition, using common sense smarts-wise, this is where they rank on average across the league in-game ratings. Because you can see 8th in team speed, I imagine that means based on their highest average speeds across the league, they have the 8th fastest team, the 18th best coverage team, the 32nd best pass rushing unit, the 6th best uh, run or blocking, which seems a little off, 11th rushing, which is probably just running back overall, and then 21st in passing, which could also be quarterback overall. I'm not 100% sure, but one of the coolest, coolest things, in my opinion, is the fact that it shows you how many devs they have at the specific dev trait types, which, of course, you can see across the league. There's teams with better, but for Seattle specifically, two hidden devs, one X-Factor, one Superstar, 16 star devs, and 53 normals. They come in as an 81 overall team with a 9-8 and record in 2023. The Seattle Seahawks absolutely underperformed in 2023. A team with all of the talent in the world took JSN on top of it just because... The best defense is a good, unstoppable offense, and they were far from that. A lot of it did come from the offensive line, but also, uh, from what I'm hearing, is Geno Smith struggled to get through his progressions, and with a talented team like this, you really wonder how that could be possible. Really good running backs in Kenneth Walker and Charbonnet. Uh, O-line, like we talked about, definitely on the lower end in the league probably a bottom five offensive line. They added a Christian Haynes, who we're going to be putting at center because he's the best fit for that position. It's the biggest need we have on this offensive line. Tight end, Noah Fant really just hasn't developed for any of the teams he's been on. Uh, Tyler Lockett's still great, but only star dev. Worries me about the longevity of him in this franchise. Metcalf as an X-Factor is fine. JSN as a youngster is fine. Kenneth is obviously fine. New quarterback, no matter what Geno does, because he's on the older side. He's a 78 overall but he is 33 years old, normal dev. Good for one year after that. I'm not sure what you know where he stands. And then we move on to the defensive side of the ball where they need to get better at pass rushing the quarterback. Did they do that? I mean, technically, Byron Murphy is obviously an improvement for the interior of that line, but Edge is still kind of like, okay, if Mafe's not the guy, this Edge is going to suck, right? He showed glimpses. He showed promise. But if he doesn't, like, take the next step, like, a super leap, this edge is going to be pretty much useless. And they need somebody to step up, and he's probably the most primed guy to do it. We have uh, Derek Hall starting because in Wosu, he doesn't really have much of a future on this team. While he's decent in real life, he's a, he's a solid role player. Derek Hall at least is still young at 23 years old. So if anyone was going to develop into a great player besides Mafe, it would potentially be him. Safeties, Julian Love was uh, a nice addition to this depleted safety room. Obviously losing uh, Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams. Uh, cornerbacks, Woolen and Witherspoon. Woolen did have a, uh, a down year technically. But at the same time, still as an 86 overall, you question why he was ever dropped to normal. I'm not sure if that's going to change with the uh, potential roster update that's coming out at the end of the week, but maybe. Leonard Williams traded a lot to get him. Has it really been worth it? I mean, considering what they had before, not really, but at the same time, it is still an improvement having him there. And as far as a Madden standpoint goes, we have a lot of players to replace. Tyrell uh, Dodson, he actually had a pretty damn good uh, grade last year. Probably a bit overrated, but still... Uh, an improvement for off-ball. This team has struggled for a while since really losing Bobby Wagner. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're going to have to replace a lot of players here. I'm not sure what's going to happen with middle linebacker, but Edge might have to replace both of those guys. Strong safety for sure. Corner seems fine. Interior of the D-line for sure. DT probably right end. Offensively, obviously quarterback. And then at least two linemen, maybe three if you add in Lucas. Tight end for sure. This is not the hardest first rebuild team to do. But I think it's it's right on par of like, hey, this is not the easiest team. It's not the hardest. Not a bad starting point. And of course, there's a reason why we say starting point because this is going to be the first of many rebuilds. So if rebuilds, franchise content in general interests you, maybe think about subscribing if you're new. 
leaving a like if you end up enjoying the video. And if you're not new, I do appreciate your support on this channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, John Picare, second channel, Picare Plays for non Madden content. Let's get into the rebuild. Of course, with these rebuilds, I usually do five seasons. If by that fifth season we're finally showing promise and nothing before that, David Bakhtiari is a freaking bear. That's interesting. Uh, we'll do a sixth season, but five years is usually the cutoff point unless we're specifically doing a 10-plus year rebuild. Oh, Lord, we're this broke. Uh, okay, sweet. $15 million. Uh, Tyrell Dodson, Jerome Baker, and Julian Love. Julian Love is definitely a guy I want to keep. He's got that, that perfect overall mixed with the age that is, you know, able to stick around for a lot more years. As far as Baker goes, though... Maybe, right? He's, he's like maybe good enough. Let's see. It's 82 overall. He's got some interest, which also helps uh, quite a bit. Block, uh, block shed's decent. Zone and man coverage is actually pretty good. He's not a bad player by any means. And I think we could maybe find a way to afford him. But as of right now, the focus is for sure Julian Love. I feel like he got a contract in real life. Am I crazy? I don't know. Four-year 32, though, for Julian Love, I think is not bad. As far as what Baker wants... If we can lowball him, maybe we can make it work. Um, 3 or 21, while well, this team lines with my interest, this offer certainly doesn't. Okay, we'll see you later. To the playoffs, it wasn't looking good. Maybe the team turned it around, though. I kept the uh, the playbooks, because once again, it's a brand new Madden. I don't know which playbooks are good or not. We, ha we have a likely idea, but not for sure. Seattle finishes 7 and 10, uh, which would, in this conference, put us already pretty out of it when it comes to a high draft pick. Quarterback is definitely a position of need, and you usually need to be pretty high for those quarterbacks. Uh, I looked at some of the uh, the rookies. Oh, wow, look at these losses, and then we won the last two. That kind of sucks. I looked at the uh, quarterback class, and there's maybe potentially two to four guys that look decent, so we'll see what kind of options we have when it comes down to it. But Geno Smith, uh, numbers 28 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, 3,500 yards. Very Geno Smith, like, two years ago which is not bad. Kenneth Walker, pretty good. I'd like a little more yards, but that's fine. Lockett was great. I'm really praying that he gets a dev up. Metcalf was awful, though, and Jigba was okay for a slot wide receiver, and then Noah Fant, I expected a lot less, so that's technically a good season. O-line, Lakin Tomlinson, is he going to get a dev up? Nothing that matters. He's 32 years old already, 33 maybe even. Uh, we are on a 3-4, and we know for how many years now in Madden, 3-4s are usually pretty bad, but in general, we also do have some pretty bad overall players, so... Not expecting much there, but maybe even more than that. Witherspoon with five picks could get himself a dev up back to that superstar rating he had last year. Dixon was uh, pretty good with 51 yards per punt. Myers, it could have been worse. As far as yearly awards go, I didn't even actually pay attention to Byron Murphy, but Dak wins MVP apparently. Rookie of the year, we do not win it. Were we even on the list? No? Okay, that's, that kind of sucks. Uh, best quarterback, though, number six, which is, I mean, I'll take it. Seven for Walker, four for Lockett. Lakin at four, no one on the, um, the hell was it, D-line, linebacker, no, DB at number four, and then kicker at number two. Miss the playoffs, but like we said, might have an option to get QB, which is just as important. Honestly, I would rather not make the playoffs if it's going to mean getting a, uh, a quarterback. The Super Bowl is between the Cowboys and the Chiefs. Super riveting stuff. I would have never expected it. I'm rooting for these underdogs. Both underdogs, of course. No one would have ever expected them to face off uh, the Giants at 4-13. and To think that's probably going to be our online franchise team. Kind of crazy. Let's take a look, though, at the DevOps, if we had any. Uh, lock. Okay, it doesn't even matter. He's down on 84 already. He's 32? Holy crap. Superstar Dev is great, but he lost 28 ratings. Anyone else get a Dev up? Yeah, didn't, didn't expect any. Defensively, Mafe goes to star. That is actually massive. No Dev up for Witherspoon, which is surprising. And then Woolen, I didn't really expect him to go up and Dev. Mafe, 26 years old. We at least have someone halfway decent at edge. 79 overall. At least he's star. I mean, we'll see what happens long term. But yeah, I mean... Lockett was really the dev up I wanted, and then it didn't really seem to matter as much as I was hoping it would, unfortunately. Uh, what about retirements? I don't care about the press conference. All that fluff, well, some of you guys have been calling it fluff, which I agree. I think that's a great example of it. It's just too much effort. It's just, like, honestly, clicking all of these storylines probably would add 30 minutes to each rebuild, and it would, at best, upgrade, like, 20 ratings to 30 ratings. The very best. It's just not worth it. It really isn't. We're also negative in money and wouldn't even get Baker, so that's going to be fun. 
Can't wait to see. Why are we so broke? How could a team that's lacking talent be broke? I mean, it's not lacking talent, but it's, you know, it's not perfect is what I should say. And their quarterback's not on like a top of the league, you know, contract either. Of course, let's see it. Free agency, we have 8 mil, which is kind of like the mix of uh, the salary cap increasing, different contracts, uh, you know, reaching the end of it. The Saints are screwed enough to where Chase Young is likely uh, gone. That is interesting. That is definitely very intriguing. Jamal Adams back to free agency. And there's actually some okay names here. Um, but as far as, like, who we can afford, it's basically no one. It's a lot of players I wish I could afford. I can't believe Edmonds is already 28, though. Like, it just feels like yesterday we were drafting him at 24, 25. That's insane. But, yeah, uh, there's obviously positions of need, but we are very broke and cannot afford them. Is that Zeke at Superstar Dev? Okay. Why not? But yeah, let's, I guess the important thing before looking at scouting would be what draft picks do we have? Pick 12, 44, 76. Okay, so pick 12. Probably good enough for quarterback. Not for sure, though. I would love to draft a hidden dev quarterback to start out this rebuild. Hell, start out the year's rebuilds. Geno Smith, what kind of contract did this guy on? Is Can we release him? We can release him. So that penalty would actually be a benefit. Sam Howell's still here. Sam Howell is still here, so... There's really no point not releasing Gino. Gino wasn't bad for us, but he regressed really, really hard. And while he's still usable, we're saving about 20 mil, which means if we really wanted to, we could get one of those linebackers back, which if we don't get one of them back, man, it is Trice. Not Trice, Tyrese. Tyrese Knight, I almost called him uh, Trice. That's not the right player. Not the right rookie. Wrong rookie. Uh, but yeah, we have a lot of needs, and it would probably be pretty smart to go for a linebacker. If a pass rusher is available, that would be great, too. We need to spend some of this money we just freed up. Joke, obviously. It's a joke how much he wants. Uh, Chase Young, though. I mean, 20 million per for a pass rusher, even though it's starting to get to like 22 mil per. That is cheap. That is cheap for an edge rusher these days. I'm willing to pay the big bucks for him. We'll see how common Chase Young is uh, as a free agent. If he's common, maybe this will be the last time we go for him. Or maybe we got really lucky at a time of need for for edge rush. Linebacker, like we said, we need one more guy. Did we bring Bobby back? I don't know. He seems like he's been kind of like mad at the franchise. No? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm off. Uh, I'm incorrect here. But he is also like the only like affordable player. So... I'm willing to do a one-year four for him. Anything more is too much. Really hoping we get Chase. Did we get Chase Young? Yes. A three or sixty-six million dollar deal is a-ok -okay in my book. And Washington's gonna get Bobby Wagner back, but that's okay. Uh, I really want to move this team to a four-three because we know the numbers are gonna be better for for a four-three. But you know what? Because it's the first rebuild, we're going to allow it. Which could also mean we're basically allowing for this rebuild to be a failure. All right, time to start the draft. Oh, come on. Get rid of this damn video. I'm in the middle of something here. Uh, the quarterbacks, I don't know. I don't think they look that good. You have two, maybe three that are decent. The problem is the talent grade, I don't know if I agree with it. Now, it's ironic because I did a scouting video where I said that the talent grade is about the safest thing you can bet on. But the problem with that is... I mean, look at this. Do I do I trust these ratings? Like, is this guy a one to two? I don't think so. This guy around one talent, maybe I can buy it because really good uh, under pressure, good break sack, medium short deep is solid. Uh, I don't know when he's going to go though. He's a top five talent. Maybe this is time to look at that mock draft if it's not too late. Which I think you can look. Where the hell even is it? We might have missed it. Oh well. Um, let's just slow sim. We have pick twelve. The Patriots shouldn't go QB1 overall. And they don't. They go right end. What about the... Uh, oh, the Giants do. Uh, the Commanders. So we should be fine all the way up to six. If quarterback goes before then, that is just stupid. I'm going to trade up to six, I think, for that round one talent grade. Oh, I just sold so hard. There's no way the Saints are going to trade with me. Oh, but if the Saints don't take QB or they don't take the guy we want, we could be set. Man, they need QB bad. <laughs> I accidentally skipped it. No, I meant to trade. Uh, we're about to lose our guy. Doran was Doran. I think Doran was the guy, wasn't he? Oh, that is not what I wanted at all. 
I meant to stop right at six. It would have been the perfect play. Didn't happen. And now we're going to be waiting for a two to three who is supposed to go in the top five. Nice. Um, I guess we go to we go to our next pick and hope Parker Hill's the guy. I have basically no choice. Damn, that is a sell. If we even get him, because the Rams could go QB as well. All right. Well, we sold. We would have traded up to six, which would have costed us in fairness. So if this guy's actually good at least... Man, I don't know. What about... Where are other quarterback options? So we could wait for Glenn, who's a 2-3 to three, with a 3-4 to four talent grade. Oh, man. I really like Parker Hill's ratings, though. I think I'm going to take him. I think this is so risky. But I, I'm betting that he is at least star dev, Parker Hill. B mine. Oh, I don't like that. Yes, hidden dev. Okay, that's fine. He's really elusive. Just has no speed. I mean, the key ratings looked amazing. It's just that talent grade, true talent, was it was kind of misleading. Uh, I'm going to go all the way to our next pick. We don't really have uh, a whole lot of draft capital, right? We just have, like, you know, the normal stuff per round. Oh, Cersei went 33 to the Patriots. That's a hell of a draft pick. Oh, of course, Lewis is still there, meaning that the guy we just took might have still been there. Fun. I do got to say, though, one of the things I really don't like about this year's game is the fact that the favorites tab is under the exact same thing as the positions tab. I don't know why they would have thought that was a good idea. Should have still kept it where you can have your favorites and then look through the positions of your favorites. Really, really dumb change on their book. I am not going to lie. Uh, Warwick, who is a day three. You know what? I really need a safety, but I like the idea of going Foster and the tight end. And I don't think I can do both without trading down. So I'm going to try to trade this down. And the Bills are just straight up giving me the trade I want, pretty much. So I'm going to trade with the Bills. So we get 61, we get 93. We're able to grab the players we want. Linebacker, there's a lot more of than tight end. And we need a tight end pretty badly. So if the tight end's still there, which I imagine he will be, he's three to four and it's not even the third round yet. That is the position we're going to go with. Uh, even if there's some like other position I really like, uh, I really don't care. I need the tight end pretty badly. He's a two to three grade, which isn't perfect, but six six four six five speed with some pretty good ratings. Uh, I mean, he's the best bet I've got. Josh Fitzpatrick, who is oh a B plus. What's the dev? Also hidden, slow. I would have thought a little bit faster than that, but yeah, he did look pretty good. He's tight end one. I mean, there really wasn't many options to be honest. Uh, we're gonna go to the next pick. Uh, we could trade up. We do have that late third round pick. Might even do it. We definitely need some linemen. Um, but first things first, with the lack of linebackers... Oh, crap. I, I keep hitting left trigger just uh, like out of habit. Uh, attributes, I think, is the best way to go about this. Foster, who looked pretty damn fast, if I'm not mistaken. We, dry, we scouted so many linebackers. I don't know who's even who at this rate. Uh, but a B block jet, A hit power, B tackle, A play rack... I mean, he's not the best in coverage, but 6'2". I worry about that speed, but he's a 1 or 2 talent grade. Man, I don't know. I don't know. 1 or 2 talent grade. Have I ever been wronged by that? I don't think so. I just don't think I have, and that might be enough for me to be like, hey, let's do the thing. What about Brooks? B power move, A block shed. Strong, decently fast. I need a linebacker bad. A one to two talent grade versus Marcus Brooks. We need a linebacker so bad. I can't pass on the talent. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab him. I don't know if I'm gonna like this decision. One to two talent grade. He was rated a B, fair enough. Also hidden. We will take it. We're having a pretty good draft. We sold so hard on that quarterback, but we're looking okay here. Do we even have any linemen left? We have a day three center. We have a day three left guard and a day and a three to four center. Uh, I'm just gonna go to the next pick. I think we have 93. There's got to be someone there still. I can't really trade up. You know, we are lucky to even have this pick. See if anyone's there. I seen Wyndham there. I keep hitting the wrong thing for favorites. Uh, we have another linebacker. We also have another safety, Saxton, who I don't think was that fast. Had pretty good zone coverage, though. C zone coverage, A hit power. Yeah, I can't do that. Uh, the four five one is okay, but that's about it. Uh, what about Core? He's fast. 6'2", 21 years old. Pretty damn athletic. We need two linebackers. What about him versus Warwick? I mean, I'm all down to whoever's better. 
Warwick looks more athletic. This could be a risk. Barry Warwick. He was rated... Oh. Yikes. See. Mm, not our best work. Not our best work. Let's move to the next pick. See if there's anyone there. I should have slow simmed it to make sure that, that day three center was there, which... There is, like, no chance he's there. I'm trying to look. Yep, Kaplan. I'm pretty sure that was the name. Damn, we sold. Um, I guess I risk Windsor because I kind of need edge. B finesse. He's not even that fast. I'm taking the chance. He is also a C grade. Also normal. Oof. Yeah, the first, like, three or four picks were pretty damn good. And then the rest, not so much. And then we have Bonds, who's amazingly fast. Are we going to find one of those hidden devs? He is a C+. Plus. And he is hidden. We might have landed ourselves a superstar. They still have the speedy superstar archetypes. Neat. That's all I can say is neat. Now in the sixth round, might be even a little high. I'm going to try to find a kicker. So we have the choice between Patrick Main and Steve Kelly for kickers. Patrick Main is younger. Um, I really don't know. I think I'm going to go youth. I don't really know if either are going to be good, but they're both good rated. Uh, he's a C. He's a Nev. All right, fair enough. Looks like he's working for the mob. That's fine. We don't judge around here. And all the fullbacks kind of look bad. It's the seventh round, though. Dorian Hoover is going to be our choice. D grade. I don't care. He's a fullback, bro. Relax. All right, let's find out how much we sold. Did we sell or did we ultra sell, I guess, would be the, the secondary question. We're broke as hell. Let's take a look at that draft recap. Please be in the 70s, QB. Come on. Okay, 73. Not bad, actually. He's pretty accurate. This is a good quarterback. I thought he was slower than this. Didn't it show he was slower? Maybe I was looking at the wrong rating. I know his Excel, Agility, and Change Direction was all much better. Please be like X-Factor. Come on, X-Factor went up. Okay, start of. I mean, I expected that. Fair enough. What about the tight end? 72 overall, late second round pick. Automatic starter just because of potential... He looks pretty mid, I can't lie, but outside of going to the first round, there was not many options at tight end. Dev trade, just be like a superstar. Star, fair enough. Did we land any other hiddens? I think it was just Foster. It was actually a really high overall, in fairness. Oh, no, the other wide receiver, too, the speedy one. So Jason at two and the speedy at number three. Well, actually, technically, we have Lockett still. Not very good at zone coverage for Mr. Foster, but the one to two talent grade, once again, the talent grade... Does not disappoint. Sure, he's not the best pure player, but a very good overall. That's fine. We don't have to deal with the, the speed. 67 overall for Bonds. Okay, this is interesting. It's one of the lowest overall, like, special archetype speedsters I've ever seen. He is really, really raw. Let's take a look at that dev. Dev trait is... Yeah, superstar. So we got another one of those superstar types. I say another as if this wasn't the first one we drafted in this Madden. Uh, Doran, this, uh, pick seven overall. We were going to go for him at six. 76 overall, super strong arm. Pure pain, to be honest. Please be hidden. Uh, or not hidden. Star dev only. Please only be star. Okay, I can live with it. All right, so fair enough. Could have been worse, could have been better, but I can, uh, I can, I can work with it. Our guy was, you know, only three overalls lower. Also star dev. Didn't have to trade up for him. Win-win. Here is the team for year two. Uh, definitely looks better. Offensive line, we did not help out at all, which is probably the most realistic thing you can do in a Seahawks rebuild because they just seem to do that all the time. Wide receivers, obviously, we're hoping Metcalf and JSN are just the long-term guys. Tyler Lockett will be here for one more season with Bonds kind of taking his job the next year. Defensively, we're hoping Moffat can build on a star dev season. DTs, we need a you know, left end and a right end more than likely, and a strong safety wouldn't hurt. Foster looks like he can be a long-term inside linebacker. And then Warwick, we'll see what kind of year he has. Maybe he wins something, and we have those guys set as well. So still a long way to go, but we solved the biggest positional need, which is quarterback. Oh, well, it's kind of... Oh, wow. Oh, money has decided to show up. Kenneth, obviously, we're going to long-term sign. Metcalf, yes. Charles Cross, we can afford that. Mafe, we can afford that as well. We're going to see if it's worth it, though. Abraham Lucas being uh, somebody that wants more money than Cross is not what I expected here. Wolland, $30 million per is perfectly fine, even at normal dev. I really hope he gets a dev up or two, though. And the rest we can afford to let go. And we can also afford to keep him if we wanted to. But, yeah, 150 mil. Damn. 
I love it. So I'm not even sure what he actually accomplished, but uh, Chase Young had a scenario where he needed to get seven tackles and a tackle for a loss. He got 4,500 XP. Did he come close and didn't get it? Just like our chances of making the playoffs here. That's kind of what it seems like. Uh, but let's actually take a look at what that was. I know for a fact that was the goal. Do you still get XP and whatnot if you come close? Where the hell is he? Uh, Chase Young. He had three tackles, one for a loss, so kind of half of it in a way. I'm not sure, but hey, you got some XP. It's going to be interesting to keep looking at those breakouts because they're definitely a bit different this year. And obviously I've been paying attention. On par for a better season? Maybe? If we lose, it's the exact same, to be fair. And we... I still don't know. We win! So we do go 8-9. We obviously miss the playoffs anyway, so it's all irrelevant there. But we do technically go have a better season with a worse quarterback, which is, I suppose, a positive, right? I, I, I guess. Uh, that middle of the season, just like last year, was really bad. A lot stronger of a finish, though. Really wonder if we can win Rookie of the Year. I ended up going with the Miami offense, Pittsburgh defense, and uh, it seemed to be pretty good for Parker Hill. Rushing was pretty good. It's just the touchdowns were low. Metcalf was unbelievable, though. JSN, pretty good again, even though he's more of a slot guy, even though we had him as the boundary. Uh, Lockett wasn't bad. Fitzpatrick was, for the most part. Haynes was really good, only allowing one sack, but he is a center after all. And then for the 3-4 defense, the interior was really good, but Edge, 6.5 six and, and 6, especially for Chase Young, who we paid $22 million per for, is actually pretty disappointing. The rookie main uh, missing 25% of his kicks. One of them was blocked, and then Dixon had an even better year, which is, uh, you know, unexpected to see. Mahomes wins MVP. Offensive player of the year goes to Metcalf for the NFC side, and we did win rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year. I actually had Foster as the sub linebacker, but Warwick still won it anyways. My idea would have been to have one really good linebacker instead of risking having one okay linebacker both sides but hey whatever works best wide receiver o-line number 10 for the center d-line uh number 10 for leonard williams maybe it's good enough for dev up i don't know chase young at seven for linebacker proving once again a lot of three four defenses and how bad it is but unfortunately it will still be a season where we miss the postseason and the chiefs once again are in the super bowl this time against the eagles one way or another it's the nfc east and we do not see the results. The winner was the Chiefs again. Let's take a look at, uh, again as in against the Eagles. I don't even remember who won last year's Super Bowl, to be honest. I don't even remember if we looked. Uh, Hill goes a superstar, and we get no dev ups on offense outside of that, which, I mean, we didn't really expect anything else. But yeah, Parker Hill already an 84 overall with only 140 QB XP sliders. Maybe those need to drop a little bit because, I mean, 84 overall is not amazing and he did have a rookie of the year level season, but still, that is still quite the glow up. Defensively, any dev ups? Uh, Chase Young, who I felt had a pretty bad year, is an X factor. I mean, we'll definitely take it, but I'm a little surprised to see that. Can't lie. Uh, was Woolen a dev up? I couldn't tell. I really hope he was. He wasn't. Damn, son. Uh, Warwick went up in dev, obviously, and then Julian Love also went up in dev. 28 years old now. I thought with a superstar dev right here, he would have been even higher than this, but nope. Still really good, though, just, uh, for how long? We now have negotiations, which we took care of pretty much everyone. We have an option for Witherspoon. I think it's probably still cheaper just to pay him and JSN when the time comes. Felt like Abraham Lucas wasn't worth it. He was given up seven sacks and was halfway through the year. Lockett's obviously regressed really hard. Howell, we don't need anymore. He's asking for a lot of money anyway, so even if you wanted him as a starter, I don't know about all that. And then Michael Dixon's been really good for us, so a two-year eight. I don't know why he wouldn't accept it, which he did. And yeah, we have 89 mil. We could probably spend a good 40 of that if we really wanted to. The thing about that is I really don't want to. I want to save as much money as we can. I want to keep the guys we have... Because realistically, you know, Chase Young, even though he's an X-Factor now, and I know it's early, didn't really work out. I don't want to do that again. Of course, Brock Purdy in free agency, that's kind of crazy. Zach Tom, 20 million per is even more crazy. Zedarius, 20 million per. I know it's the open market, but damn. Jameis Williams, the value is actually really nice there, but we don't really need a wide receiver. Braxton Jones, I mean... Unless he wants to accept $13 million per year, there's no way I'm paying him. Like, I'm just not paying these guys this kind of money. Even though we have struggled to get rookie linemen, 
We have, you know, it's only one draft, so uh, we'll see what we can do with this draft. Potentially, Alex Pierce, another Madden, another nobody wants him kind of situation for some reason. And Keaton Mitchell, star dev, not a bad backup. Uh, but yeah, realistically, what we would want, more offensive linemen, a safety, and interior D-line, which... I'm not really seeing a whole lot of that here. So I was kind of scrambling to, uh, you know, make some moves and whatnot. And for some reason, the Colts want Inwosu and they're offering me a free safety. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to be a free safety that we even start long term, but it gives me options, which is great. All right, here we are in the draft with pick 15 overall. Uh, I would be looking to trade down more than trade up because I have a lot of positions of need. Try to go for Braxton Jones last second. I even offered him a three-year worth 16 and a half per. Didn't work out. Uh, we have other options, though, so if I do see a player that I'm like, hey, I want that player, I might go with them. O-line definitely need it. Caldwell, he's around one projected. We got a lot of 80 to 90 percenters, but we don't know for a fact where everyone is. D-line, we have a couple of guys that are like, you know, in the 300-pound range uh, that look kind of decent, but nothing set in stone there either. Edge, I mean, I think even though Mafe hasn't been great, the value I can get by trading down from these positions, especially since I don't even know about Levins, technically I know about Burke, I think outweighs the potential of for Edge that I technically don't need just yet, you know? Uh, oh, but you have Winters, who's actually around one grade with an A finesse. Oh, it's tough. It's tough sledding. What about the uh, the combine? Where even the hell is he? Yeah, the 40 time. Where is my round oneer? There he is, round one, four, six, 40 on top of it. Corner. I mean, I put some guys on the list because I don't know if I'm going to get a pure safety or not. Uh, I think the pure, like, value of trading down is there. I need, like, three linemen, right? I need three linemen and more. I need three linemen and a DT. Technically, multiple DT. I got to trade down. I have no choice. I got to get crazy value. Even though I really want edge, I got to trade down. And the Eagles are giving me exactly what I want to get. 31, 63, 95, a fifth and a six or some crap. I mean, they just, they always know how to make me their friend. Jonathan Tuck. I mean, hell, who knows? Maybe there'll be an edge there, 31. I highly doubt it, but you never know. There could be a chance. Chamberlain, uh, he made it pretty far, actually. Favorites, any edge rushers? One of two. Ooh, DT type. Uh, we have Burke still there. And Winters. Wait a minute. Hold the hell on. Why? Why are they still here? I'm so confusion. What about the 40 times? So Burke was a 464 and then you have Winters who was a uh, 46 Winters be pursued 454 four. I mean look at the athleticism am I crazy I'm taking fear value Keon Winters uh B minus oh I don't like this oh he's 50 oh no oh he's hidden okay I seen 51 in true talent that scared me he's probably not the greatest of overalls but hey we still did pretty well for ourselves I think uh, we do not have a pick here until the 15th pick in the second round. We're going to have to trade down. We need all the linemen in the world. The Bears are kind of giving me a decent offer. That sucks. That's okay, but it's not great. Uh, that's actually pretty good. What would be considered a better value, though? A third? Nah, a third two years from now. There's no way that's more valuable than a fourth this year. Right? I don't know. We're going to trade with that to the Niners. Some stuff I like about the new, the way it looks, and some stuff I don't. Uh, we have pick 57 and 63. I feel like we're still kind of like, we could move by, down even further. Yeah, I mean, I'll take a 7th round pick, why not? We add something with that 7th round pick. I did not want to do that, I want to go further. I should have actually paid attention to safety. We, of course, made that trade in fairness, but... Oh, no. There was safety edge, I think, and I just completely forgot about it. Oh, there's a lot of safety. Why is safety just not going? We need defensive tackle slash D-line as well. If there's a guy that looks really good here, I might just have to force it. So we see A block shed with B power move. Okay, that is really good. We also see this guy, Gore. I think both of these players are good. We have a 2-3 to three or a... Wait, Levy was a day 3. Huh? I'm going to take Demetrius Gore. I think Demetrius Gore looks amazing. He looks so good. 
He was also a B minus with also hidden dev. That's a win. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with some of their grades. I don't know if that's a, a B minus in my opinion. I got to pay attention because I almost just simmed our pick. I wish I knew our next pick. I'm looking around. Next pick is 15 and third. Okay, so we could probably get O-line. We can live without safety. I think I'm going to take Caldwell. I think just the fact that he's considered an A, uh, or not an A, uh, round one talent, I got to take him. Who was a B? Also hidden. There we go. Finally drafted a hidden lineman as well. Uh, I'm going to slow Simmon until we kind of run out of safeties. Because even though we have that safety edge, I still want to know. I want. I still want a new safety, I think. There goes Klein. Uh, Watkins was a safety of mine. What are the Giants? Oh, there's a lot of... So a lot of the safeties that I was looking at are gone. Hell, they might even all be gone at this point. We still have a few. Whitfield, Lawton, and Drummond. I think some of those guys were on the slower side, but... I think they were all pretty decent looking. Okay, so the only guy I would really like here is Whitfield. Like I said, I don't think he was the fastest. Oh, he's really fast. What am I talking about? I'm going to trade up with the Saints. I want that safety. We actually keep pick 15 in the third round. We trade our later third and a bunch of other stuff, a fourth and 2-6 with a seventh to move up with the Saints here. Once again, keeping 15 to potentially grab a, another lineman Linebacker is actually kind of fine. We got an edge rusher for the future. We're actually in a really good spot. We could use another DT, though. Uh, but I think pure value-wise, I'm going to go with Whitfield. B zone coverage, really athletic. And he is a also a B. Normal dev. That's fine, though. That's fine. You weren't going to hit hiddens forever. The guy did look really good. I mean, there's going to be a lot of options at 15. Uh, so I'm just going to move on to that pick. Whatever is there is there at this point. All uh, right, so DT Morris is still there. O-line is still there. How good was Morris? I think he was like we were going to scout him further, and it kind of glitched out on me. Oh, wow, Morris is actually really good. That could finish our DTs. I think I have no choice but to grab Mr. Malcolm Morris. Very athletic as well. Hidden? See, they give us a... Oh, no. Oh, no. But he's hidden. I don't understand. Is it, Maybe the pick is just like... His true value is lower, I suppose. But, like, I don't agree with that, you know? It doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense that you're saying that the pick sucked, yet he was hidden development trait at a position of need. I don't know. A lot of safeties in this round, though, I will say. Uh, and we did talk about wanting to trade up at some point, if possible, for another lineman. Do have day threes, though. How good was Jackson? I mean, Jackson probably is the safest bet. Not like that's saying much. If not Jackson, it would be Moreland. We need another lineman. Let's just go to the next round. Damn, Jackson's still there, too, huh? I do like Moreland a lot, even though he's, like, great. He dropped 75 positions. Which I would imagine can't be good. I'm almost thinking Rush might even be better. But the base ratings or the pass blocking for Moreland tells me he's probably one of those like really good pass blocking, bad run blocking, but has hidden development trade players. So I'm going to trade up. We have pick 111. I think we can make one more trade up to the Titans. We would have just enough players to start our offensive lineman group up. And I think we've finished everything else. Yeah, we need two DTs, three O-line, a safety. We might be missing one O-lineman, but even then, I think we're fine. We have a starting left tackle, starting left guard, center, and yeah, so I mean, the center, or the left guard you would want to replace, but don't actually need to, and that's really all that matters. Titans, fifth might be a little bit of a reach. I don't care, dude. I just want my damn trade. Moreland, the day three, although I guess I'm putting a lot of stock into a guy that we don't even know about yet. Uh, I know there's another guy, you know, the 3-4 Jackson, but I think Moreland's the better bet. B-plus. Hidden dev. There you go. Our highest good pick yet. I know it's probably mainly just true value, but still. Let's go to the next round, because you just never know when one of those day threes is going to just stick around longer than expected. Which, if they are, I mean, I'll trade up again. I'll start reaching into next year. Maybe I should have done that, honestly. I should have probably just done that out the get-go. Either way, it's too late now. Let's move on to what might be our only pick, the seventh round, potentially. 
I keep saying potentially when it literally shows on the bottom left. We got two draft picks here. Uh, future punter, technically. It'd be kind of a, a position that we don't even really need to worry about just yet. Wide receiver's fine, so I just didn't even scout it. That guy's raw, but do I not just take him anyways? Clay easily. I mean, it's the seventh round after all. I'm going to do it. He's going to suck, but whatever. D grade. Eh, whatever. And then fullback. Uh, they all actually look really bad. I think technically Doyle's the best, but it's not really saying much. Kevin Doyle, who was a D grade. Oh. Either way, Mr. Irrelevant is very fitting for his name. I'll tell you that much. Do we start that edge rusher over Mafe? I don't know. 74, 74, 75, 75, 71, 72. It's not saying much because it's quite literally one of our first drafts, but our best draft of Madden 25 so far. Winters does look really good. Let's take a look at that development trait. Really surprised he fell as far as he did, but so did the safeties in fairness. And he's a superstar. That is kind of goaded. I can't remember what position we actually need him. Put him at number 52. Really want to go to a 4-3, but that's just not going to happen. Demetrius Gore, I mean, it really doesn't matter. He's very Byron Murphy-like. This is like almost exactly the same size of Byron Murphy, ironically enough. I don't know who the biggest of the DTs is. Byron might just stay there. Worked out for him anyways. Start of element trade. I don't even know if Leonard Williams is still here. I think he probably is. Which if he is, if we can save some money, I think it might be time to let him go even. Uh, O-line, do we need him at right guard? He's 6'3". I don't know who's going to play right tackle. 6'3", right tackle seems a little short. Dev for this guy is star. I mean, kind of expected that in fairness. Who else did we get? We got the free safety who wasn't hit in development trait, but he still looked pretty good. Very fast. 80 zone, 81 hit power. That's great. I mean, you guys don't even need to see this, but I'm going to move him to strong safety. He's the starter without a doubt. That was a good pick. I mean, there might have been better safeties. I don't really care too much. I, I don't really want to see that. Uh, Morris, the DT, was it left end we need to put him at? 6-3, so technically Byron is the heaviest if we're not counting Leonard, which we're not because he's on the way out because he's the oldest by a lot. Dev, also star. Not surprising anyone with that one. And then Moreland, how tall was he? 6-2, damn, we're going to have to find a different player to play right tackle. I don't think we have a single tall guy in the interior that can play right tackle. This kind of sucks. And he is start of element trade. He is the smallest, though. Well, I don't know if we have someone big enough to play tackle. We definitely have someone enough, small enough to play center. Here we go for season three. The quarterback's all the way up to an 84 overall. Metcalf's back up to a 92. Uh, JSN's an 84. O-line, we obviously need a new left guard, but we added two new offensive linemen that are hidden. Haynes moves over to guard. Might even get him paid in the end after this season. Foster and Warwick were great as rookies, and they're both basically, you add them together, 80 overalls. New strong safety, Whitfield, we're hoping with that high zone and high hit power and high speed that he can develop down the line. Even though Williams on the team, we can't really get rid of him because he costs too much. I think we still should start these youngsters. Morris has 79 finesse with 73 block shed, and then Gore's all the way up to a 75 overall. Woolen needs a dev up badly. As far as long-term wise, though, we need a new free safety potentially. Hopefully, if you know Woolen starts getting dev ups, we don't need to worry about that. And then a new left guard, and outside of that, I think we've actually, quote-unquote, rebuilt the team. Will we win a Super Bowl or anything like that? I don't know. $164 million? Wow, Weatherspoon's contract is super cheap. So is JSN's. Uh, hell, with this kind of money, we could probably keep Charbonnet on the team for another two years, saving more money with uh, Williams being gone as well. Byron Murphy's up next, but, I mean, all the money in the world with that rookie contract, even without the Wookiee, the, wookie? <laughs> the rookie contract, I still feel pretty damn good. You know, even if we had to pay the quarterback right now, we'd be fine. Wonder if they, you know, last year's Madden, uh, it seems like the salary cap didn't really increase to the to the averages that it was in real life or it has been in real life. Now, maybe, it's a little early. I can't make that judgment just yet. Now, maybe they overdid it? Question mark? Maybe? We'll see uh, as we, you know, play more, you know, franchises, do more Super Bowls, uh, you know, kind of runs and rebuilds. And uh, speaking of this one, I don't know if we're going to have it. Four and five so far. All right, so we have Malcolm Morris, who has a challenge. The last time we did, like, easy was really hard. So I'm going to go above average, I think. Let's see what this So the challenge is three tackles for a loss for a dev upgrade. Okay, that is really not easy. But I've seen worse. 
Are dev ups just like more? I mean, I haven't really seen more common though, but I feel like they're just tougher. That's what I'm getting at. Did we lose again? We did win actually. Clutch. Let's see if we got three tackles for a loss for a dev up. I mean, that's crazy though. Just didn't work out. Yeah, because three tackles for. Is EA like out of touch with how hard it is? You still got XP though. But are they out of touch with how hard the challenges they're setting are? Or do they want it to be that hard because they're like, hey, these dev ups, they mean a lot. Which, I mean, I'm going to say more than ever, don't use dev trait regression. Turn that off. It seems tougher to get dev ups than before. You know, it seems like end of season dev up uh, rewards from, you know, season goals and award wins are your best bet. And we're going to be entering season four without a playoff berth. Really fun stuff. Did we regress down to seven and ten? Did we regress down to seven and ten? Eight and nine again. Super fun. I mean, you guys don't need to see the schedule, obviously. At this point, if I was forced losing things, it'd be pretty stupid to continue doing it. This is the year I thought we were actually going to go off and, you know, maybe... Start making the playoffs. But no, it's not going to be the case. Uh, defensively, I, I think I have to change the whole defense around. It's now all the way to the second Madden 25. And 3-4 defenses are still ass. 25 and a half sacks for Crosby. 18 for Parsons. And you look at outside linebacker and you got 11 as the max. Guys like TJ Watt putting up 10 sacks in a season. Highsmith and Bosa at nine sacks. I mean, sheesh. Still with the three fours, huh? But you know what? Since it's the first rebuild, we're going to allow it. And some you guys, any of you that are Seahawks fans are like, yeah, that's really not fair. We got rookie of the year on defense at least. And we are headed on to year four without a playoff berth, like I said. I think it is time to try the Chiefs offensive scheme. Call me crazy. Uh, what do we have? The Chiefs versus the Vikings. The Vikings, ever since, like, late last Madden into now this Madden, seem to be pretty decent in Sim, I gotta say. Let's see if they win it all. Of course, it also doesn't help that Brock Purdy's in our division now, so it's even... Was he? No. I can't remember what team he actually joined. Was he in our division? The Chiefs won a Super Bowl, so they've won, like, multiple now. Um, maybe I'll click these storylines. I normally don't, because I think it's just bullcrap. It's a lot of fluff. It's a lot of nonsense. Off-season workouts. I mean, you guys, you do get a little bit of XP. Parker Hill, I guess he's kind of the big problem. I didn't see anything. Oh, are we going to reach out to him, like, right now? Like, it's just so much, like, waiting in be in between, you know? Throwing the run of play action. Um, why don't you improve your throw power, you bot? It'll impress your teammates. You can dominate and make every throw. Just think of the views on social. Okay. Well, I say you can dominate and make every throw. I think that's cool. I don't agree. I'll let you know how much I progress. So that I get, I get it wrong. Am I supposed to literally, like, play uh, fortune teller? I don't know. Personally, if, if someone was going to tell me anything... Of all that bull crap, that would be... Make sure we win the draft. Make a splash and upgrade the roster... I guess win the draft. I'm not really sure how they decide who wins it. What does that mean? That's a good question. Draft a sleeper in the fifth round. Once again, these these goals, man. Draft a difference maker in the first three rounds. 80 plus overall. There is only like maybe 180 plus overall in the entire draft if you're lucky. See, it's like the other dev ups, it almost feels like, okay, maybe they are trying to make it where it's tough. So you really earn those dev ups. But then you have that stuff where it's like, okay, maybe they just don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, I don't know why I'm looking at the Giants here. The Seahawks. We lose all of our mentor backups. But, like, they want me to draft an 80-plus overall in the first three rounds. Will there... I really want to, like, look at the, the scouting to even see if there is an 80 overall plus. We got to rem remember that. We got to remember after the draft is over to check if there even was an 80-plus overall. No dev up on the offensive side of the ball, unfortunately. Defensively, any dev ups? Gore, no for Woolen, which is pure pain. No for Whitfield, which is pure pain. And we did start Winters because the potential's there. Even though 3 fours, they suck. 90 overall, Chase Young can't even do really anything. All right, we have some re-signings, which we took care of. Fifth-year option. Honestly, that could save us in the end. But since we have $154 million, I want a long-term sign anyone I can. 
now. So there's really no point in me doing that fifth year option. And I think with all this cash, you could easily argue we could spend even half of that and feel fine. Tyreek Hill's all the way down to a 92 overall. I would say normally he'd still be higher than this. So regression's a little bit different, it seems. Same with Stanley. he usually be like 86 plus, which isn't much, to be fair. Um, Stanley would be an improvement. And because we have all this money and know where to put it, Unless I go with Paris Johnson, which I don't even think he's worth it, I probably will actually go for one of these tackles. You can call this maybe a too much of a trade or too high of a value, but we traded pick 16 overall for Andrew Thomas from the Giants, who has two more years on his contract. Realistically, we have no actual need outside of like one, maybe two offensive linemen. But realistically, we don't really need them even. So uh, we're going to move Caldwell back inside, I think, maybe left guard and move uh, Charles Cross to right tackle, and that's that's really what we look on the offensive line, and we'll look at future positional uh, needs that we might have coming up where, you know, contracts running out, we don't feel like we're going to pay that person. But yeah, that was the plan. Spend a high draft pick on a proven talent at one of our biggest positional needs, and that's exactly what we did. There's nothing else more important, maybe wide receiver, but even then we have an 86-plus overall wide receiver too, so I don't really see how that makes any sense anyways. Just got to, I don't know, see some wins. I, I, it might just be scheme related, like I said. I'm not sure, but this team's pretty damn good. I'm not really sure why it's not a, a playoff team yet. Maybe that quarterback being an 88 overall, maybe reaching into the 90s after this season. Maybe that'll be the final push we needed to make, perhaps. All right, our first pick in the draft is 16. I kind of just scouted, uh, you know, a bunch of random players. Actually, you know what? I should not have skipped this far ahead. There was some pretty damn good-looking cornerbacks that I don't know if we're going to get now. Uh, we also could use a DT for the future. Wow, these corners are still here, though. I'm so confused. Now, they don't look amazing, but a B-man and a B-zone coverage with a B-press from Finch might be worth it. You know, especially when, like, like I said before, we're kind of drafting from luxury. He's 20 years old as well. Problem is he's kind of slow. Do you bet that he's 20 years old and he's like a special build that's going to be like Hidden Dev? Or do you not? Webster looked pretty good too, in fairness. Six foot four, very athletic. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Uh, was Fells. Fells was also one of the good corners. Uh, you know, kind of raw, really athletically fast, like pure speed. But do you take him... I mean, would you not bet on the six foot four player? What do we know about him, actually? Uh, I know that he's six four. I think was my only thing I knew. Trailer's also in a zone coverage. I would bet on Finch the most, but since we're going luxury, I'm gonna go with the six foot four corner with a lot of speed, who has a B minus. Okay, that's not bad. And he's hidden. I don't know why they're like, oh, B minus. We'll make plays in zone coverage. Concerns about his speed. Ninety three speed, six four. There's concerns. Sure, I guess. Maybe. I don't know if I agree with that. Let's go to the next round. Um, Once again, O-line, I guess. Future-proofing O-line. Future-proof the DT position would make sense, supposedly. Uh, tight end Wheeler looks good, but I think we're fine with the tight end we got for now. Uh, linebacker, future-proofing would make sense, too. If we want DT, Borden's the last guy, and he did look pretty good. As you can see here, an A finesse move, C block shed. If he's 21, I might make the play. Damn, he's 21. 4 8 is interesting. He's very athletic. 21 years old makes sense. Also, the 2 to 3 lineman. I mean, offensive lineman wise, there's a lot of solid looking ones. I would say that Langford looks probably by far the best. Do we trade up for the DT? And. I mean, we don't really need DT. I'm going to keep Byron Murphy for sure. You know what? There's so many players here. I actually have, like, straight up, like, 15 more players. I'm just going to move on to the next pick. And we're just going to take best available pick, which is, I mean, kind of what we should be taking because we have technically nothing that we need. All right. So the tight end is still there. The DT Borden is still there. There's a really good chance I end up going with him. Langford, the lineman. I think Langford's the best bet. I'm going Langford. Super strong as well. Who was a B. Got to be hidden. Nice with that strength. Beautiful. Let's go to the start of the next round, which, if there's somebody there, we'll make a trade-up, potentially. There is a linebacker, Mr. Adrian Crocker. 
Which type of player was he? He was just really raw. He's just athletic. Still worth it to me. I'm going to move on to the, uh, the Patriots. And we're going to trade up. Fifth round pick might have been a little bit of a reach. It is what it is. You know, it's like 14, 15 spots. I think that's pretty significant. So we're going to be taking the linebacker Crocker, 6'1", 21 years old. Pretty athletic. Not amazing, but good, I think. C. And he was in dev. I did not expect that at all. I really didn't. But at the same time, I don't know if that really matters to me. We still have a fifth-round pick. Is that true? Yeah, I don't know if that really matters to me too much because, you know, we're future-proofing. I think we need to replace those linebackers a year or two from now, so it doesn't really even matter. Jared Hall with B man coverage, A press. Why not? It's the fifth round after all. B plus. Hidden. Okay, I did not expect that. Now, that one is a shocker. Maybe we're actually going to hit this uh, thing after all. What do we say? Uh, like a 75 plus overall on the fifth and beyond? We might have actually pulled it off. I doubt it, but maybe. We better get goaded rewards for it, though. I'll tell you that much. Not easy to pull that off. Safety? How good is he? I don't have any of those guys scouted. Uh, zone coverage is C. Why not? Antoine Townsend? I think he's going to suck, but I'm just going to grab him. Why not? He, oh yeah, D minus, <laughs> I expected. It's the reason why it wasn't on my list, and I think at some point we're going to need a punter, so I'm going to look for one now, I think. Last pick of the draft. All the putters sucked except for Merritt, why not, I guess. Which, he was a C, and he was in dev, okay. I mean, we've drafted uh, a hidden dev kicker and punter in this rebuild. All we're missing is a fullback. I mean, I think we've done pretty damn well draft-wise for our first rebuild of Madden 25. Once again, first of many, I should be saying. Uh, 74, 75, 70, 72. Safety we knew sucked. And then 71. Curious to see this corner because he was 6'4". I've drafted a few 6'4 corners named Webster. His injury kind of sucks. But as far as a pure player goes, he's definitely good. Will he ever see the light of day with us? Probably not. 39 gives me vibes. 39 gives me vibes. Let's take a look at the dev. Star, I was expecting Superstar. I'm going to be real, but what about that other corner? Was he? He was nowhere near 75. Yeah, I don't know what they expect from me. Uh, Langford, we actually don't even need uh, to start. We don't need any starter at this point. Uh, but I suppose, you know what? This guy could be a future right guard. Haynes needs a contract. I doubt I pay a 27-year-old. That's not even close to 85, 90. Uh, Langford goes up in one overall middle linebacker. I don't really care about the rest, but Jared Hall was kind of like a... I say I don't care about the rest in here. I'm about to show one. He was kind of like a different build, and more importantly, a pretty late round pick. So I'm kind of curious to see if he's anything special like Superstar. And he is. All right. All right, so uh, he didn't get the throw power, but 6,000 XP, three throw accuracy deep, medium and short, along with two throw under pressure. That is crazy good. Especially for someone that already has, like, all of their accuracies in the 85s, I would imagine. Like, that's really good. Is this going to talk about, like, the fact that we failed the draft things? What specifically you found a sleeper at? Um, to, I mean, defense, right? A sleeper? Um, secondary, technically? Corner? Which player specifically? Cornerback... I don't know what we're talking about. I appreciate that. The team is happy you kept the promise you made to upgrade the roster. Their morale is increased by... Okay, sweet. Nice. I, I guess I agree. Still not going to try the Chiefs playbook. I'm going to go with the Bengals in this season four of this rebuild. Uh, Hill has an upgrade point after that 6,000 point boost. The team looks great. It's an 88 overall. It's got to be a top 10 overall rated team. Uh, before the season's even begun, and with that knowledge, you would assume that gives us a pretty damn good chance of finally making the playoffs. Like I said, five years is basically the cutoff point. We'll see what happens. I'm so confused. I went with the hard challenge, yet this is the easiest one we've seen, no? Technically? Because it's four plus combined tackles for lost sacks or force fumbles for a dev upgrade. When one of them was like, you need three tackles for loss on like a billion regular tackles. Like at least this gives me an option, right? If you get a sack, I'm pretty sure that counts as two. I'm pretty sure you get a tackle for a loss and a sack from that. So basically two sacks gets you the challenge. I don't even know. Like I get it's a different position, but 
arm and a linebacker for the easiest one. Three plus tackles for a loss to upgrade his dev to superstar. Like, that's not easy. Like, the other one's technically easier because you're also getting a chance for the sacks or the forced fumbles or something else to get lucky into, you know? And like, if it was double or something, like, we needed six of those, okay, yeah, I mean, I, it makes sense. But one more, but a chance at, uh, you know, a bunch of different ways to get to it, totally worth it. Uh, we got 2,500 XP, but not the dev up, so... Seems like DevOps, like I said, there. Ooh, I almost forgot the national focus. Uh, they seem tougher to get, i got to be honest. Uh, and as far as what I would expect us to need, I'm going to go out on a limb and say wide receiver, tight end. Neither is really the strength of this class. That's fun. I haven't changed the playbooks uh, since the start of the season, but man, the turnaround is insane. We were having a little bit of an iffy one, and we turned it around nicely. DJ James has actually developed into a pretty damn good main corner, but I think with the corners we just drafted, we can't keep them. You can see 89 man coverage. Not the highest of overall, but 89 man coverage with okay speed is definitely good. Uh, some of the other guys we were expecting to have to pay, uh, Parker Hill's coming up as well. A uh, little more money than I would have expected, I'll be honest, but uh, it's fine. $30 million per. I would prefer this to be like a two or a three. There you go, three years. That's fine. We you know, we technically paid him a lot less before. Uh, this is a $25 million per deal, so I'm going to move this up to 26, and I'm going to do a four-year, four-year 104. I am surprised he didn't take that. That is completely fair compared to what he's asking for. Okay, I mean, money is starting to become a little bit of a problem, but even, once again, if we had to pay the quarterback, we'd still have, like, more than double the money needed to do so left over. We had a pretty damn good turnaround and then started losing a billion games. Should still be in the playoffs, though. And how did we finish? 11-6. and six. So we did win the division. We're the number three seed. Uh, but yeah, at one point, we were 1-3, and three, and then we were like 9-3. and three. But then we started losing a bunch of games. This is how the season went. Like I said, 1-3. and three. Then we won... How many is that in a row? Seven in a row. Lost one, won two, lost two, won one. So a pretty good season overall, obviously. Let's take a look at the numbers. Once again, the Bengals offense with vertical zone run. And then defensively, we still have Pittsburgh on, which isn't really done well for us. But wow, Parker Hill does really well. It's 36 touchdowns, two interceptions, 3,500 or 3,800 yards. How much of that is because he's finally in the 90s? I don't know. Kenneth Walker, I'm a little surprised he hasn't done a little better. Usually a Kenneth Walker type, 4.5 to 5 yards per carry is easy. JSN, though, 19 touchdowns, 1,200 yards. Metcalf was great along with him. Bonds was decent. Fitzpatrick, one of his best seasons yet, which is insane much. Offensive line, the blocking was actually pretty good. Thomas gave up seven, but he's still, you know, it's good. Uh, Chase Young, we just paid him, and, man, I'm glad he got it. You know, he had a good year because makes me feel a little bit better about paying him all that money. Murphy, same thing. Uh, Gore was all right. Warwick is a middle linebacker. Winters did nothing. It's really disappointing that 3-4 is our way they are in the game. Witherspoon, did he do enough for a dev up this time? I don't know. Maine was ass. Oh, my God. 61% of his kicks? How can I even trust this guy? Either way, let's take a look at the awards and then head right on into our playoff game. Number six for that touchdown to pick ratio. That is crazy. Any award wins, though? We might have come close, but uh, outside of... Best linebacker, we will not see that, unfortunately. But hey, to the playoffs for the first time, thankfully. Uh, going up against the Eagles, not an easy team to beat. We are a higher overall, though. Let's see it. I just wonder if we did enough to get a dev up for the quarterback. Is he going to be an X-Factor? It's important to note. Going to the end of the game. 7-0 with a stop. So we got the stop to get to that touchdown. 7 to 3, 14 to 3, 21 to 3, 21 to 6. Still only the third quarter, man. This sim is taking a long time. And 28 to 14, it's still not over. Philadelphia climbing back, and we do enough on offense. 35 to 21, beating a pretty damn good team, I must say. Let's take a look at the stat line for both teams. Our quarterback was unbelievable. Five touchdowns, zero picks with 400 yards. Jalen Hurts uh, didn't really do much. Our run game was terrible. Uh, JSN with four receiving touchdowns. Bonds with 158 yards. Team effort was off the charts. My lot of returns, and he uh, wasn't great. 
Chase Young was pretty damn good. Gore was really good. Murphy is good. Winters, we had a pretty good team effort on defense as well. And just a dub for the Seahawks. That was a very impressive win. As we move on to the division around, Eagles, I mean, we've seen them make the Super Bowl. Oh, no. They probably had the bye week, didn't they? 14-3. and three. It just has to come to this, doesn't it? Oh, they didn't have the... Who the hell had the bye week then? They destroyed the Commanders. Who was it? It wasn't the Packers. Vikings? I mean, we did see them make the Super Bowl, I suppose. But here it is. The end of our little run that we were having a good time with. We have the same overall, in fairness, but... Still, I mean, let's just be realistic about it. Also, did that show that C.D. Lamb wasn't an X-Factor? That makes zero sense. Uh, on the other side, you have the Broncos and the Ravens. The 9-8 and Broncos. That just feels wrong. Either way, here it is. To the championship round, if we win it. It's the damn Cowboys, though. Let's be realistic. As we're down 14-0. 21-0. This is EA, after all. They love them some Cowboys. Nice little turnaround, though. We're down 10 we have the ball. I mean, let's see it. Let's see the comeback. It's it's real. Eight minutes left. And, I mean, they drive down the field like they're losing by ten. Fourth and two, you got to go for this, right? They are going to go for it. I really shouldn't be out here for this. I am the ultimate seller. What do I normally play on? It must be on this one. That's a tough one. And he drops it. Well, that's a GG. Oh, that sucks. The freaking Cowboys. Okay, I mean, it's not over technically. Although you kind of need to move down the field. Wow, you, I mean, for one, you need to move down the field in general. But also, you need to move down the field in a decently good, quick manner. Outside there, and that ball is low. And it's going to cause the ball to be dropped. That and Bonds' is ass. Now it's really over. I mean, is this not a fumble, though? I'm so confused. He catches it, lifts it to his chest. That is not a drop. That's actually a fumble. But they're not going to say it's a fumble. That is 100% a fumble. He had possession for a month. I'm not even going to get over there in time. And we can't even catch the damn guy. That is crazy. It's also funky-ass running. We get molly whopped by the Cowboys, who are the same exact overall as us. Glad to see that for the 40th straight year in the world in uh, Madden, it's all about them playbooks, baby. Blake Corum put up four rushing touchdowns, by the way. What are these rushing numbers, bro? 0.3 yards per carry for Kenneth Walker. Okay. I guess. If you say so. 0.3. Yeah, that, that seems legit. Well, for the final season, it's going to be Chiefs playbooks. Well, at least on offense. Defense, you know, we're in a 3-4. What an actual disaster. Here we go to the Super Bowl. Colts versus Cowboys. It's like the same damn teams. The Chiefs have been in a bunch. The Cowboys have been in a bunch. Let's see who wins this one. Colts versus the Cowboys. It will be the Cowboys. Everyone is shocked. Everyone is shocked and no one knows how to handle themselves. QB go up in dev? He didn't. JSN goes up in dev, though. He's now nearly a 90. Uh, and then that was it. No one else on defense. We still have Julian Love. Maybe we did actually need a safety this whole time. And, of course, as we can see, Wolin's regressing. So the fact that the dude stay, it starts at normal dev and just can't get a dev up to save his life is going to mean the team's peak is kind of already reached. It's kind of crazy to think, but it's true. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically the gist of it. 89 overall. This is the last season, so I'm probably gonna go pretty all out in free agency if there's there's names that make sense. Two mentors are gone. Let's take a look at these two storylines. As we've seen, the one for the quarterback gave him a bunch of stat upgrades. All right, what do we want to work on? Uh, I want you to work on strength. I didn't pay attention to what he said. Strength, agility, excel. Yeah, I mean. I guess. It's really random, but it, I also do like... Oh, crap. I'm going to go in and repress your teammates. You definitely know me. Okay, I'm convinced. Okay, I mean, we got lucky there, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of random on who gets it. But it is kind of cool that you have that chance to get, like, a super injury boost for somebody that's 
maybe has all the potential in the world, but because they're like low injury, they just get injured all the time. You don't get to use them. Um, I say actually, I should have went with the top, the left one. We're happy with our talent, brother. We actually are, to be fair. It is actually true. Um, yeah, I guarantee it. I guarantee it, brother. Playoff guarantee. You'll be. I mean, if we if we get fired because we don't guarantee, like you actually make the guarantee, that'd be kind of uh, hilarious. But I think that's fine. I don't see why. If we don't make the playoffs, I mean, the rebuild's over anyways. Fifth year option. You could argue that would make the most sense. You know what? I'm actually gonna argue it. I'm actually gonna say fifth year option. We're gonna do it. Uh, Haynes and uh, DJ James. Going to let them go. We have replacements for them already. Even the punter we have a replacement for. All that money. Let's see what we can do in free agency. I'd like to save 40. I think 40 is all you need to save. And even that might be more than we need to save. Let's see that free agent group. What do we got? Jalen Carter. Matabike. Uh, Cooper DeGene. Uh, ooh, actually, Cooper DeGene. The safety? I mean, I'm definitely paying Coop. I don't know if he has any other offers, but I'm definitely paying. I'm playing him in a safety. Let's take a look at what his uh, zone coverage looks like. He is 90 man, 85 zone. Maybe I find someone else on the team to play zone coverage, to be honest. Maybe Wolin plays there, actually, because he's already regressing anyways. 6-4 safety, huh? Not a bad decision, actually. Uh, that's probably all I'd want to spend in free agency. It's still a good amount of money, and it's still a really good player, but yeah. Cooper DeGene, welcome to the team. Wollens playing safety. Weird times we live in. We have pick 26, a bunch of different value. Uh, you know, DTs, corner safeties, all that stuff. I'm just going to be taking best available pick each round, I think. Once again, I don't think we're going to be able to pull off any... Uh, ooh, Billingsley. We also had another guy named Christmas, and he must have went. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to pull off any moves that are going to like change the game forever. We also have Shepard, Eddie Shepard. I mean, he's kind of selling it for me with a round one talent grade. Don't get me wrong, the wide receiver is good, too. You know what? I might go crazy here. I might take Billingsley for the future of wide receiver because he's one to two. B should be hidden. He is. Nice. And then I'm going to trade up for the other guy, I think. What pick is it? 27 of the Vikings? Let's see if we can pull that off. Uh, you know, safety is not even really a need right now. We have um, wool in there. But yeah, long-term wise, I can't imagine it's going to work out too well with him just being the guy. Oh man, we got to trade even more than this. And of course, we, it can only be draft picks. Damn, this is a lot to trade up for, but he is a round one projected. I can't believe they want this much. Was I not accepting way less than this? Should I have been accepting more? Is that all I'm hearing? Like, this is our whole draft class, basically, for a safety it is a position that I always talk about being pretty damn hard to get. You know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to move on to the next round, and if he's still there, I make the play. If not, I don't make the play. And he is still there. We have other safeties too, but how many safeties do you see with an actual round one grade? Let's try to move on. This is not how I wanted to do that, but sure. Let's try to move with the Buccaneers. I mean, it is what it is. Let's see if we can get their trade. I'm willing to take that risk because it's really the only position we need going forward. And uh, even then, we don't even really need it right away. So next pick is in the sixth round. Did we make a mistake? It really, the worst part is doing all that scouting for me to just, like, get rid of it all in an instant. But Eddie Shepard, he looked pretty good to me. He is a B grade. He is hidden development rate. So, I mean, he seems like a good pick. And we shall move on to the sixth round. What do we got in the sixth round? Probably nothing. Usually I do like, I mean, day three could be sixth round, but most of the guys that we go for are gone by round four or five. Maybe a new fullback? Is it time for a new fullback, perhaps? I end up going with a random edge rusher. He's a bad pick, D minus. It's a sixth round pick, dude. It's literally impossible to have a bad sixth round pick. You could literally take a punter. It doesn't matter. Because you're just taking a shot in the dark. It's not like we're throwing away like a guaranteed goon player with that pick, you know? We have a 467. That's pretty good. Why not go for the speed at fullback? Uh, C minus. Normal devs. Got a little bit of speed. That'll be the draft. Easier uh, time constraint wise to uh, take a look at the, the players we drafted because we didn't have a whole lot of them. Didn't really d you know dig into next year though. So, I mean, 
At least that's fine. 75, 75. So, I mean, the players were good. It's just... Was that safety really worth it? I don't know. This wide receiver is definitely worth it. I figured wide receiver, in my opinion, is kind of the hardest. Safety's right up there next to it. And I figured it's also one of the most important, whereas safety doesn't technically matter as much. Star Dev for the wide receiver. And then Eddie Shepard, 79 zone coverage, 83 hit power. Pretty damn good. It reminds me of the safety we actually already have with Whitfield. But obviously this guy has Dev. Be better than Star. Oof, yeah. I don't know if that was worth the trade-up, but he was good at least. Here we go for year five. Debatably the final season. I think it's also more than ever a great cutoff point because regression seems to be a bit stronger this Madden. And I don't think it makes sense to go against what EA thinks here because I actually kind of agree. I think, you know, 30 for most wide receivers, unless they're like some of the top dogs with their, with their technique is usually the cutoff point for a lot of different positions. 29 to 30 is really just like death. And I should know, I'm 29 in real life, and it makes me sad. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, we're seeing, you know, Metcalf already dropped down to a 90. Uh, Woolen with only normal dev, he's down to an 85, I think 86 at corner. Um, you know, we're seeing some regressions here. And uh, I think this is kind of the peak. This is the peak of the team, 90 overall. Kind of curious to see what the rest of the league looks like. At this point in time, I almost actually retired because it, it just wouldn't go. It took like a double click. Oh, yeah, we, it looks like this. It's actually easier to see now. So you can see the Chiefs are 92. The Rams are an 88. A little surprised to see that, actually. You have the Ravens at 89. The Texans at 90. Uh, you see some 88 overalls. Uh, you know, we're 90 overall. So we're like the second, third highest overall, technically. The playoffs should be guaranteed, but can a Super Bowl be at least achieved? All right, money is actually becoming a little bit of a problem, but technically we do already have uh, the quarterback position set because, you know, that that fifth-year option was $40 million, so that's factored in already. Uh, tight end, I think you would go for a new one, personally. Bonds, we already have a wide receiver three. Technically, maybe he would be moving up to two. Both the linebackers, do you want to lose them, though? They're really goaded. A five-year 67.5? Wow. I mean, I know it's because they're both red interests, but the fact that they're not willing to take that is kind of sucky. Like, keep the dynamic duo intact. Five-year 70, that's what we'll offer to Foster. Tight end, I think you can do better than Fitzpatrick. He really just never developed. Uh, and then Charbonnet, he's a backup running back. Anyways, future-wise, you have to pay Winters, but the team is able to play at least another season, it seems. To the playoffs, we were looking pretty good. I'd imagine we're in them. Did we get the bye week, though? We, we, I would like to get in here. We did not. We end up not even winning our own division, but in fairness, would have gotten the bye week if we did, as the Rams, who also were 13-4, and four, had the bye week. So we had to play in the wild card round and on the road the whole way because we couldn't beat the Rams. Was it both times? It was only one time. So, I mean, in fairness, we just got unlucky with the tiebreakers, but... 13-4, it's an amazing season once again. All hail the Chiefs uh, playbooks. They're busted. 39 sides on 7 picks, 30, 4,300 yards. Even Kenneth almost had 6 yards for Gary. The tight end all goes completely off. Man, the Chiefs are just like... They're the identity of the last several Maddens. I guess they've been the identity of the entire league. Kind of the same old, same old, which is really disappointing, I can't lie. You know, where's the where's the 3-4 defenses doing well? Or, you know, where's the offenses that aren't the uh, the Chiefs doing well? It's pretty annoying stuff. Best QB, though. Best running back. Wide receiver is at 4. O-line at 7. D-line, no. Linebacker, 10. DB, no. And kicker, no. No, number 2, actually, for Maine. Let's hop in to the wild card round. I think with guys like Metcalf, guys like Woolen, a bunch of those types of players, and money becoming a problem, you know, those guys regressing and money becoming a problem, this is likely going to be the last year. I think year five, or not year five, but five years is the perfect cutoff point. It really is. Dak Prescott's a Falcon. Okay. The Atlanta Falcons, who have Dak Prescott as their quarterback, 7-3. Cowboys have been doing pretty much everything but paying their players in real life, so it's kind of expected. 
It's a bit of a back and forth here, 24 to 17. Halftime score will remain the same. Huge drive for 14 point lead. Only up by seven after a touchdown. We get another seven points. It's a seven point game again. We drive down and close it out. Talk about a back and forth gunslinger battle. Both quarterbacks threw for four touchdowns each. Kenneth was way better on the ground than any of the other playoff games combined. Tyreek Hill's a Falcon. I mean, do they even have any of their, like, normal players? Like, it's just cheaters. Like, we have Andrew Thomas, Chase Young, and Cooper DeGene. You know what? I just listed off a bunch of names, and yeah, I have no room to talk. I was like, ah, all we have is... Oh, actually, wait a minute. <laughs> we, we, we actually do have a lot of players. Excuse me. I apologize. But we move on to the next round where we play the Packers, who are 13-4. A lot of 13-4 and four teams. End of the game. The Packers score three. We score three back. 10-3. to 10-10. to 17-10. to 10. I mean, even if we win it all, say what you want, but... Maybe we didn't deserve to win it all. Okay, I mean, now we're starting to pull off a little bit. But even with the Chiefs scheme, we're struggling. We just gave up 21 unanswered, I think. And then all of a sudden, they gave up 14 unanswered. I don't know what just happened, but it's another insanely high-scoring game. And I've got to blame a 3-4 defense on it. 10 touchdowns in two weeks. Parker Hill is not looking back. Kenneth Walker and Jacobs basically had the same game as each other. Billingsley with a touchdown. JSN with five receiving touchdowns. That's the most I've ever seen in one game. And it's the very first rebuild we've done on Madden 25. Kind of crazy. A couple of picks. A couple of sacks. A miss or a blocked kick. But ultimately a win for the Seahawks. And we're moving on to the championship round. I don't even know if we've done that yet. That may be the first time we've even got the championship round. Let alone a Super Bowl. I think, right? Pretty sure. Either way, championship round, who is it? Not the Eagles, bro. Who do they beat? The Rams by seven. The Rams are actually a pretty good overall. So say what you want, but the Rams are actually decent. Don't know who's in the Super Bowl waiting, but... Here it is, Seahawks versus Eagles. Here we go for all the marbles. Wow, the Eagles scored instantly, but we kind of did as well. Winner goes to the Super Bowl, 14-7, 17-7. Nice drive. It's down by three. And it'll stay down by three at halftime. Up by four at halftime. Come on. Up 11. Only up five. Up by eight. Up by two. And that might be it. Up by nine points. Can we get the stop? We can't. But the clock is not favorable for them. We get the first down. And we're moving on to the Super Bowl. Here we go. Five touchdowns for Hill. Five for Hurts. What a freaking performance. Kenneth showed up, kind of. JSN with two touchdowns. Kirkpatrick, a lot of players with touchdowns. Uh, Sacks. Morris did really well. And that'll be a dub for the Seattle Seahawks. Winning by two. I wonder if there was a field goal missing there. We actually should have looked. On to the Super Bowl. Who is it against? I didn't even get to see it. The Bengals, it looks like. And here it is against the Bengals. I guess before we do anything, it's going to be the last game anyway. So we might as well take a look at potential dev ups. Hill, Walker, JSN, Kirkpatrick. The power of the Chiefs. That's all I can say. Kenneth Walker is unbelievable. His uh, trucking could be a little bit better, but he's obviously really, really good anyways. Really talented stuff there. Uh, DK Metcalf, he's a 91 overall. He's going to continue to regress, but we'll just take a look at this point. 92 is overall was his best, but still pretty good. But yeah, your guys actually, you know, they regress pretty quickly. It doesn't take long, which I think is fair because, you know, they get up to a high overall kind of quickly. They drop kind of quickly. I think it's, you know, it's a short-lived kind of thing. You have your little, uh, little slice and that's about it. Parker Hill, though, I mean, talk about pure accuracy. Outside of play action, he is really good. And then Kirkpatrick, we've seen, uh, got to superstar. 85 overall, we didn't even have a plan to re-sign him, and yet all of a sudden now he's a superstar. He's solid looking, and we still, once again, wouldn't have a plan to re-sign him. We don't have that kind of money, and I think we can do better anyways. Uh, was there anyone I wanted to see here? I guess Cross. We'll take a look at Charles Cross, because he's a real-life player for this team. Really good pass blocker. That's crazy. Like, he should be not giving up a single sack. Let's take a look at defense now. Um, you know, we don't have to look at the actual ratings after this game is over. Win or lose. 
I'm happy making the Super Bowl. Even if we lose, that's that's a successful Super Bowl or a rebuild, in my opinion. Uh, that's the way I look at it, at least. Let's take a look at uh, Jeremiah Foster. Block sheds amazing. Very bad coverage. Got the best of all worlds defensively. Winters, the 86 overall superstar. 93 finesse, super athletic. He is really good, even though he doesn't put up the numbers usually. Then we look at the opposite side of him. We look at Mr. Chase Young. The X Factor, the 91 overall X Factor. Really good finesse move as well. Amazing block shed and also very athletic. Free safety, Tariq Woolen. 86 overall. Uh, you know, not much man coverage. Really good zone. 97 speed with 6'4 height. Felt like he was the perfect safety. Really didn't go up in overall. Whitfield just never really developed. I know he's still really young, but 86 zone coverage. No star dev, no superstar, no X Factor, obviously. Kind of disappointing. Uh, corners, Cooper DeGene, even though he's not ours, we'll take a look at. Witherspoon, 91 overall. He's going to regress pretty hard. Like I said, I felt like this was like the golden opportunity. This was the peak of this team. And I think we were kind of right. Cooper DeGene, really good balance. He's a really good player in general. Who was the superstar in there, by the way? Oh, yeah, that was the, the gem cornerback. Gore, 90 overall. He got up a really high overall quickly. Wow. Okay, so maybe these sliders are a little too high for some positions. Like D-line, you know, Morris isn't really going up overall wise that quickly. But if you have a hidden development trait, like you superstar development trait, you basically become a god instantly. So, yeah, those positions need to regress a little bit probably, or at least the XP does. Uh, Murphy was really good too. Yeah, but I mean, this is a, not a test rebuild, but this is one of our early rebuilds, so we'll learn. We'll learn from it. Let's go on in, though, to this Super Bowl and see if we can win it all or we are going to fall slightly short. Here it is, end of the game. We started out with seven points. We get another three. Ten to three, looking pretty good. Seventeen to three, looking really good. One more touchdown could do it, and that's not going to happen because they're going to get a touchdown before us. It is all tied up with 14 unanswered, 17 unanswered, uh, 24 unanswered. Any any answers, guys? Finally, down by three. They're driving down like they're the ones losing. Third and five. We're not going to get the stop. That's going to be it. Two minutes left, and we're going to lose right at the end. That is an unbelievable choke job. That is ridiculous. I'm pretty sure we gave up like 24 unanswered or something ridiculous. I don't even want to see the celebration. I, I got to see this. Where is it under his score summary? So 17 and then they had 20. I'm pretty sure it was 24 unanswered if I'm not mistaken. That is devastating. It's a hell of a rebuild and it's a success. But falling short of winning this team another Super Bowl title... That sucks. Murphy was great. Stone with a pick. They even missed a field goal. I can't like I was like, hey, one more touchdown and we might win it. And then we just couldn't score at all for the rest of the game for the most part. That's what pains me the most. Of course, not all the rebuilds are gonna be wins, and if they are, that person's cheating. I'm just gonna be honest. Nobody is winning every single rebuild. It's just unless they're like re-recording. The whole rebuild every time they don't win it in a certain span, that's the only way. So, even when you build the best team or one of the better teams, you're not going to win it always. So, that's about it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this rebuild, even if we didn't actually win the Super Bowl, there's still going to be more opportunities for the Seahawks to get another rebuild down the line and hopefully win a Super Bowl. That's going to be the goal of this Madden, maybe. Get every single team a Super Bowl, even if we have to do multiple tries. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate your continued support on the channel. Follow me on Twitter, JumpyCare. Second channel, PCare plays for non matic content. Not 100% sure what you're going to see tomorrow. A lot of recording, a lot of editing has taken place these last two days. I'm not sure what's going to happen the next day. We'll see. Might even be the start of our franchise team. We'll see what happens. But anyways, let me know what team you would like to see next. And if you have a challenge rebuild idea you would like to see, let me know that as well in the comment section below. Regardless, though, thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see?